Hi, it's Charlie from Head Industries, back with another video, this time about SMG components. Now, I did a real short TikTok about um, SMG components and why I kind of feel there needs to be some kind of a hybrid between SMG and through hole. Now, back in the olden days, everything was through hole and it basically means that pedals from, you know, back in the day are really easy to fix. They don't require a steep learning curve and they don't require a tremendous amount of equipment. Um, and you just need to, you know, look online, find the schematic, find the part, really easy to usually find the parts on these kind of boards and you can just replace them, repair them. But now, as modern day comes in, even though this pedal's a little bit old, um, you've got things like this Digitech weapon. Now this is this is screwed, and it's you know it's a completely digital pedal, um, and I have nothing against digital effects. I think you know they have their place, but this is not repairable. This is screwed. This is not. This is this is the go in landfill, and it's really sad when you consider that a lot of the pedals that are on the market right now, their SMD, will end up in the same way. They will end up back in people's cupboards, and you won't even get people to repair them because the people will look at them and go, "No, I'm not going to repair that because it's SMD." I am one of those people that currently looks at stuff that's SMD and has to sum it up in their head whether they're going to repair it or not. Some things I will, and some things I won't, and it's just. It's not because I can't do it. I can do SMD. It's just the time that takes, and I don't have the I don't have the money right now to like, fund the equipment. And the thing is, is that to start off, you just need like you know a soldering iron. You can't do this with a soldering iron. You can't you can't do it without any prior knowledge. You can't just have a bash at it. You will make it worse. Um, and it's just it's really sad because you've got these people that will grow up modifying pedals like this you know they you know for example this is one i got here it's a keely right keely started modifying bosses and you know they make pedals now they have these little things in the back of them that says oh it's handmade look on here handmade um and this doesn't this really does not look handmade like, at all that does not look this looks more handmade than this does and this has the repairability of you know a laptop it's it, you need to have some kind of prior knowledge to be able to repair these things and it's going to come really awful because these things will not be repairable or they will be repairable but you'll need to know exactly what you're doing and the thing the beauty about guitar pedals because of the voltage that they are they don't need that level of complexity and the problem i also have with it is cost you know one of the things that are frankly stated you can't have a hybrid model because of cost which is kind of rubbish because right this is this is a you know 100 quid pedal this is a 200 quid pedal this is a 10 quid pedal well it wasn't 10 quid i got it for 10 quid the retails are about 25 this has more, you know, repairability than this or this. That's just, you know, that's just a matter of fact. This is easier to repair than this is or this is. This is the cheapest pedal. Someone explain that to me. How, you know, they couldn't just make it. It's like, like for example, this, this uses a spin chip. Why they don't use a through, through hole spin chip or make the spin chip on a separate board that you could re replace it. I don't know. I do not know. Same with this. This is just a copy of a tube screamer. But this, yeah, okay, it has clipping options. Fine. But I don't get to... You know, what I'd much preferred is if I had the ability to change the actual diodes themselves. Just saying. Um, so, yeah, I just... I think that it should really go for this sort of system. Because, you know, for cost to say, oh, it costs us, you know, costs more to do this. It's just absolute rubbish because this, this, this Boss DS1, they now make the Boss DS1 SMD. The SMD board is literally this big. Boss did not carry on the costs from making SMD to the customer. It is still the same cost that it was. It just can't be repaired. You've got people like JSS and Keeley that, you know, grew up making mods for Boss DS1s. They now make everything in SMD which makes it difficult to modify or repair. And it just makes me so upset because it, it you're going to basically destitute all of these components to, to, to landfill. And it just really annoys me. And the thing is, is that when I say landfill, I don't necessarily mean like landfill, landfill. It just it will end up in the back of someone's cupboard or drawer or something and it will just never come, see the light of day. And it will eventually end up in a bin because someone will go, well, this doesn't work and I don't think it's worth anything and chuck it away. Or they see that it's worth something, but it's not really worth fixing. So they chuck it away. Um, and the thing that I don't understand is like why manufacturers do is what some don't. So, for example, like I know Electromics have done it for a long time. But one that really weirds me out is MXR. So MXR do their pedals in um, 
<laughs> SMD, but Crybabies, who are owned by Dunlop, who are who own MXR, make all of their boards in uh, in through hole. And this this is like a really good example of like the you know the coolness of a through hole. It's plug and play for God's sake. It's an amazing little board because you can modify one of these to make any Crybaby you want essentially as long as you know what parts you're replacing or changing you can do it and it's not going to take a lot it's, you don't need a load of fancy equipment and you can modify this thing you can make a base uh cry baby it's just it's it's cool it's really cool and there you know and you can buy another one you can buy one of these that's the other thing that really annoys me is you can't buy replacement pcbs you can buy a replacement one of these it costs like 30 quid um and you know the going rate for cry babies is not really worth it but you know, you, you can buy, you could, you could mess this up, you could set fire to it, and then you could buy another PCB and, you know, do it again. I, I just don't understand. It's this, this, this thing of like, there's no, there's no attitude of how the customer is going to use or, you know, change or manipulate their pedal. That's what really bugs me is, is that there's no, there's nothing there to kind of think like, oh, maybe they want to change this or maybe they want to change that. So we'll literally just put, a couple of holes in there so they can solder their own version of what they want in there it just i don't know i don't know and i access i i i, I repaired a 1981 the other day and uh the duraz and that's all got you know socketed op amps and it's like even the microcontroller that controls the um the latching because they have a relay latch um that's socketed everything in it is socketed it's it's it's, it's incredible and it's just like why are things not, you know, not socketed? And like, for example, like this, this is one of my favorite ones. So this is a DOD uh, digital sampler. And this is what really sort of brings the point home of, of what I, I like about, you know, pedals. And it it's an amazing pedal. So basically this came out in the 1990s um, and it's where Boss were making things like their digital, uh, you know, digital delays, but everything for those are, completely bespoke chips this isn't this is everything's off the shelf this is basically what you can make by making it off the shelf and the thing about making it off the shelf like this is that all of these components are replaceable all of them none of them are obsolete all of them are, 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 are you know you can go and find and buy and that is so cool that you can just go and get a brand new chip and just replace anything on this board because it's all cmos and it's just it's it, it's amazing. And the thing is, this will probably outlast a lot of other delays because these will still work, even though, you know, this one technically doesn't work because it's to do with the capacitors. And these have a nasty thing of the capacitors dying. So all of these needs to be replaced, which kind of ruins my thing. But that's because in the 1990s, I think all the capacitors went, there's a really bad batch of capacitors. So stuff that's from 1980s, 1990s, you used to have to really watch the uh, capacitors in it. But, you know, I think that this is a really good pedal, you know, and it's like, why are people not making their stuff repairable and not making it, you know, user friendly in terms of modifications? It's just, and especially when your career came up from making pedals from modifications. Um, and they just, and the thing is, a lot of people say, well, you know, well, you're just saying that because you can't do SMD. I technically can do SMD. The problem I have is that I don't have the cost for an SMD. I don't have the cost of, you know, getting a, a decent hot air gun. Um, but also the other thing is, is that it's very kind of ageist. You know, if you are old elderly and you have shaky hands or bad eyesight, there's no way you can do SMD. You know, if you have a disability, there's no way you can do SMD. So I just think that to be, just to make everything more open, to make things more eco-friendly, everyone should move to a system like this. Hit a like if you agree and share this to people if you think that what we should really be moving towards is a pedal system where everything is user replaceable in a sense. Um, and things are much easier to be modified. All right, cheers, bye.